Hello, this is Aaron with Internet Computers from InternetComputers.com. I have a video for you. This one deals with a specific error on Microsoft Windows operating systems. Sometimes you might see this error. You might have seen it before. How DLL is missing or corrupt. That one can make you possibly... Your heart might stop for a second or two. Especially if you are in a crisis or you're expecting your computer to boot so you can get your work done. Maybe you have a deadline or something extremely important you have to get to, and what do you do? You wake up in the morning or the next time you boot up your computer. Sure enough, you see how DLL is missing or corrupt. Hopefully, I have some tips and possible solutions to fix that error and get you on your way and so that Windows boots normally. I filed this one under operating system problems. How DLL is missing or corrupt. How to fix how.dll problem. Today I will be showing you potential solutions to a Microsoft Windows quote how DLL is missing or corrupt unquote error message. Make sure that a boot order in a BIOS is correct, meaning that for now make sure not to include any slave hard drives in that BIOS. Only your hard drive that is getting that hell error should be enabled and listed in a BIOS. What you could do is you go into a BIOS for your computer F2, delete, key, escape, whatever key stroke for whichever computer you're using. And then make sure that the boot order is correct. If you have multiple hard drives, I would try disabling all hard drives except for your main hard drive that you are wanting to boot Windows off of. You could try that. It could be a slave hard drive that's conflicting, and that will cause that error. Also, you might want to put your hard drive first. Let's say you have a CD or DVD drive or USB stick or network boot, whatever, in your boot order, in your BIOS. You might want to, for now, put your hard drive at the top, number one, so that it only will try to boot off your hard drive first. It could be a DVD drive or maybe there's a a DVD or CD in your DVD drive or a USB stick. Sometimes it's supposed to work normally. It's supposed to go through that list in your BIOS and then if it if your CD DVD drive is first, if it detects a CD or DVD drive to boot off, it's supposed to boot off of it. It does it if it doesn't detect it, it's supposed to go to the second device, which could be network boot. If there's no network to boot off of, it'll go to the third device, which could be a USB memory stick. If it doesn't detect a USB stick to boot off of, or there's it's not a bootable USB stick, it's supposed to go to your fourth option, which could be your hard drive. However, you have your boot order set up in your BIOS. Sometimes DVD drive, a DVD ROM or CD-ROM or even a USB stick will cause your computer not to boot up normally and sometimes you get weird errors like how DLL is missing or corrupt. I've actually solved that problem by that simple process of going to the BIOS and making sure your boot order is correct. Or another thing you could try is to take out your any USB sticks, take out any CD-ROMs or DVD-ROMs, etc. It could be one of those that are causing that error to flag up. So continue on. If that's not a solution, can you you can try some following instructions. Number one, start your computer by using your Windows XP, Vista, or Windows 7 CD-ROM. Press any key to boot from that CD. Number two, after those setup files are finished loading, press R to repair using Recovery Console. Number three, when you are in a recovery console, select an installation to log on to, usually number one, and then press enter. Number four, log into an administrator account by typing that password for this account, and then press enter. So you want to make sure that you, if, that you type in the correct administrator password for an account that has administrative rights. Windows XP, 7, Vista, I would even say 8. I think you could probably use these same tips on Windows 8. And then you might have an administrator account that doesn't have a password. Then you wouldn't need to enter a password. But if you do have an administrator account with a password, you have to enter that password to get on to the next step. 
And then number five, add a recovery console command prompt. Type the following command without those quotes and then press enter. And then these are in quotes. I just put in my blog post, I like to put things in quotes that I think are important, but some people think that you literally have to type in a command including quotes. You never have to. Linux, Mac, Windows, you don't have to include quotes. Not Usually you don't. Sometimes you have to include variables, but a simple command like check disk or SFC, you don't type that command with quotes. So, and then this is verbatim. So this is expand, E-X-P-A-N-D, space, D colon, I, letter I, 386, N-T-O-S-K-R-N-L, dot E-X, underscore, not a space, the underscore character, C, colon, cap, I think probably case sensitive, capital, you could try it, but capital W-I-N-D-O-W-S-S-Y-S-T-M, 32, with numbers, N-T-O-S-K-R-N-L dot E-X-E, and then without that last quotation. So type that in, and then you would hit enter, obviously. And then number six, if you receive a prompt to overwrite that file, press Y, Y for yes. And then number seven, type exit and press enter at a command prompt. And then continuing on, this is a graphic that this is a typical, I've seen this quite often, especially in corporate environments. And a lot of times it's, it's really not that hard. That's why at the beginning, and then to go back and let you know, I will include a link to this URL up here in this description for this YouTube video so that if you need to go over these instructions on your own perusal at your own time, then you will have the instructions and you'll be able to go over them yourself. Is when a lot of times I've seen that error in corporate environments. All Sometimes it's something simple, simple. Seriously. It's a USB stick that's conflicting. It's a CD or DVD ROM that's conflicting. You just take out the CD or DVD or you, you unhook the USB. And then sometimes it is with your BIOS. So I would try the... Unplug any external devices, any USB devices, including memory sticks. Take, make sure to eject any CD-ROMs or DVD-ROMs. If that doesn't fix your issue, then I would go into the BIOS and check your boot order. Or another option is if you know how on your computer, you, there's a special key. I think Dell is, is F12. You hit the F12 key and it takes you to a boot menu where you can select which device to boot from, you could try that. You could go to the boot menu for your computer with that's part of your BIOS. Then you would select your hard drive because if you let it automatically boot, it'll go through all of those devices that are in your boot order and it could be one of them that are conflicting. So that's another option. At least those initial tips are so that you can at least boot your computer because you're like, oh my God, I have a deadline. I mean, I've got to work on this invoice or I've got I've got work to do. I can't be stopped by a hal.dllr what what's going on? So then you're like, so those are could be quick tips just to get you to boot. It might reoccur the next time you boot, you might see that error again, but at least it bypasses that possibility of that error popping up so that you can boot so you can get to work so that you can use your computer. Then you can further troubleshoot after that. So continuing on back down here, Finally, after you followed these seven steps, you want to reboot that computer and see if that fixed your issue. If not, try to start that computer by using a recovery console as described above. So what you want to do, ba let me go over what this does real quick. Basically, what this will do is it will recreate this file. This file could have become corrupt. The i386 NTOS kernel file, that might have been corrupt. Basically, all it does is it recreates it. That's why it asks you to overwrite it because you want to. It might have been become corrupt. And then using these instructions, you can rebuild that file and then it's no longer corrupt. And then that might have been the problem. And then now it will boot with a healthy file. 
If that doesn't work, then go back into recovery console like you were before, then run a check disk slash R. And that's the command chkdsk space forward slash R. Type that into a command prompt and then hit enter and then it'll run check disk. I, I probably should have added that to my blog post. It And check disk scans can take a while. It, depending on how large your hard drive is, how much data you have, the condition of your hard drive, etc. It can take hours actually, but I'm not saying it always takes hours, but it, it can. It can take a while. So you want to let that check disk scan run to completion. It'll tell you. It'll, it'll update you with all the steps. And then it'll finally say check disk scan complete. And it might tell you that it had problems. And then once the check disk scan completes, re reboot that computer and hopefully that will fix your problem. And you don't want to reboot your computer while it's performing a check disk scan. No bueno, muy mal. That's not good for your computer. And then I would add a, a final little tip. If you might have to run that check to scan more than once. I've noticed that a lot of times when I'm repairing people's computers, I run check to scans quite often. That can fix a lot of issues and that can kind of make your file system healthier. Sometimes I've noticed that if I run check to scans two or three times, that I have a more successful rate. At least that's what I've noticed. So you might, if it doesn't clear that error right away, you might want to run a check to scan two or three two more times for, you know, three times, and then hopefully that fixes your issue. Same thing with the hell.dll error. I would say it should override it, but you just never know with Microsoft products. You might have to try that command more than once. And then, so hopefully these tips help you solve that hell.dll is missing or corrupt error. So you can always browse to anetcomputers.com for more potential tips to solve your most common computer problems. Thank you for listening.